Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are going to talk to you about what a partial fraction decomposition is and how you go about doing it. Partial fraction decomposition is basically the opposite process of adding two fractions together. So quickly taking you through what you might do in a situation where you have two rational expressions and you're adding them together. Uh, so it's likely they don't have the same denominator. And the first thing you would do would be to get a common denominator. So I'd multiply in x minus 3 on the top and bottom here, and x plus 5 on the top and bottom here, since those are the factors that are missing uh, in the denominator of each fraction. We would go ahead and multiply those through and distribute on the tops. And then because we have a common denominator for both of them, we can combine them all into one fraction, and we can add the tops together, combine like terms. So the 2x and the 4x gives us 6x. We get a constant, and then we have this expression over our two factors. And if we want, we can then write our two factors distributed as x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, so the idea is I start with two fractions, I get a common denominator, um, and then from there I'm able to put it all as one fraction and combine anything in the denominator as well. So partial fraction decomposition is just the opposite process of that. With partial fractions, there are a couple of things that we need. First of all, it needs to be a proper fraction. In other words, the degree of the denominator must be higher than the degree of the numerator. So here I have degree 2 because my highest power is x squared term. Here I have degree 1 because I just have a linear term, 6x. And so this is proper, and we could do partial fraction decomposition, assuming I can factor the denominator. If I can't factor the denominator, then I can actually break it up into separate fractions, which is what we want to do here. So we're just going to work the one that we just saw backwards uh, from the beginning. So we will first factor the bottom. If we couldn't do that, partial fraction decomposition is not possible. I then know that it's going to be something over x minus 3 plus something over x plus 5. I don't know what those things are, but because I'm able to factor this denominator into two separate factors, then I should get separate fractions over each of those denominators. Obviously then we do a similar thing where we need to solve a and b and we would get a common denominator just like we did before. So anything that was missing a factor underneath, we would multiply in. The original obviously has our common denominator because that's what we started with. Uh, here the a fraction is missing the x plus five underneath. So we multiply the top and bottom by x plus five. The b is missing the x minus three factor underneath. So we multiply the top and bottom by x minus three. That gets us to a point where we then have a common denominator. Throughout the entire equation, we have what we started with, and then we have each of our fractions that we know we're going to be setting up to get our partial fractions, uh, and everything has the same denominator. So let's take a look at, once we have this situation, how would we move forward? Because the idea is really I need to be solving for a and b. I know what it's supposed to be over, but what are, what are the values for a and b that are going to work for this particular thing? So when we're solving this fraction and everything is the same on the bottom, what we end up doing is simply solving only the top with all of the bottoms being equal. So we get this 6x plus 14 equals a times the factor that was not originally below a plus b times the factor that was not originally below b. And we figure out, well, we have a and b in this, but it's only one equation and we have an x, so we have three things that are unknown, really only one equation. How do we solve all this? One of the simplest ways to do this is actually to figure out when these factors are equal to zero. So in the first case, if we look at trying to set the x plus 5 factor equal to zero, then we will need to let x equal negative 5, and that will make the factor next to a zero, because we'll have negative 5 plus 5, and then the a will go away in the equation. So if we plug in negative 5 for x, which is okay because we're trying to solve a and b anyway, then we get this statement here. The a term really goes away, and we're left with a number equals our b term. We divide, and then we get an easy answer of b equals 2. We were probably expecting that anyway since we saw this problem in reverse. So we've already let the x plus 5 factor equal to 0. Now we want to let the x minus 3 factor equal to 0. So we'll go ahead and choose x to be positive 3. That will make the factor next to b 0. b will disappear, and that will allow us to solve a. So we'll get 0 next to b. b times 0, this term goes away. 
we'll get some constant on the other side, and that'll give us 32 equals 8a. We do an easy divide, and then we can solve for a. So we have a is 4, and we have that b is 2. And if you look at our original decomposition, we said it was going to be something over x minus 3, and that something was a, and something over x plus 5, and that something was b. Now we can just plug those in, and this is our partial fraction decomposition. You'll notice that this is what we started with at the very beginning of the video when we worked this problem the other direction. Okay, so we have a few more rules for partial fraction decomposition, how to set up your denominators and your numerators once you've factored everything. Uh, go ahead and check out our next video, which is on choosing numerators and denominators. We'll see you in the next one.